people we are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update starting off with some outgoings or one outgoing at least and that is Joe Roden as Romano says that agreement completed between Tottenham and Leeds for Joe Roden the centre-back joins Leeds on loan until the end of the season Spurs hope to find a solution for Tanganga and Davinson Sanchez in the next days or weeks and Paul O'Keefe has given us a bit of clarity on the deal as well and he says Joe Roden is on his way up to Leeds today where he'll have a medical tomorrow morning dependent on Leeds success this season both parties are looking at an obligation to buy so I do imagine that maybe that's uh, promotion related. And if they do get promotion, maybe this deal does turn into an obligation. But that's just speculation. Yeah, I think that's probably logical to assume that given the information that we have. I think it's a good move for him. And I think it's a good move for Leeds as well. They need reinforcements in their centre-back area. And they've got a centre-back who starts for Wales. Um, and look, he's not had a chance really at Tottenham. It's not worked out for him whatsoever. No one's really trusted him apart from a small spell under Mourinho um, in his first season. And I think his career has really stagnated badly. He, he even had a bit of um, a loan spell, Wren, which he started off well, but then that tailed off quite badly. So, look, I think a permanent move would suit everyone, but I guess no one's really looking to spend any money on him right now. So a loan spell in the championship where he's had his bet where he played his best football for Swansea I think that's probably best for him right now to try and rebuild his career yeah in terms of the obligation that'll be interesting to know what that fee is I mean what do you envisage it being something in between five and ten million or something like yeah, that I don't see it more be more than ten I'll be very surprised we signed him for 12 and his stock has plummeted pretty much since then so his de the only thing that you can cling on to is his form for Wales because he has been pretty good for Wales mm. and in the tournaments as well he, he, he was decent if I remember rightly so you got that to cling on to but apart from that like at club level he's not played much so you can't really expect his his value to hold yeah and he's not even that young he's what 20 going, he's nearly 25 i think yeah around that age so i mean for a defender he's not exactly old but um, old. he's probably at a good age yeah, he's not, but he's not young. He's not like, yeah. you know, he's not a youngster anymore. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, let's move on and let's talk about a potential incoming in Per Schurz of Torino. As Romano says, that Torino centre-back Per Schurz remains one of the options in the list being discussed internally. Player is keen on a move to the Premier League. Gary Jacob says that Tottenham are ready to step up their interest in Per Schurz if they can offload three unwanted centre-backs. Torino want 28 million. And Ali Gold says that Tottenham could make a Dutch double with interest in Torino's 23-year-old centre-back Per Schurz, who can play in either side of uh, the centre-back slots. Schurz is another one who Tottenham's data-led approach has flagged as a potential perfect option for Ange Postecoglou. The former Ajax man has plenty of interest with Liverpool and West Ham among those believed to be keen. Much could depend on who can offer him the most football mm. in this coming season. And that could be an issue for us because I don't know if we would be the answer to that unless we're thinking that he might be better than Van der Ven or better than Romero um, and I think right now it's hard to make that case I think Schurz I've been looking into him a bit more and I've been watching a lot of his um, in, in action for Torino last season what clearly he excels at is um, bringing the ball out from the back in his um, driving into midfield and opening up space for the other attackers he's clearly very very good at that um, his dribbling ability for a centre-back very powerful drives into the space a lot of confidence he's got decent passing ability as well he clearly is a very comfortable player on the ball um, defensively he seems to be quite aggressive but I don't know about in um, in terms of strength wise where he lies in that category pace wise as well doesn't seem to be the quickest but he's no by no means a slow coach but he doesn't seem to be like you know I mean who is but no he's not on Van de Ven level but I think Van de Ven's in a league of his own when it comes to that but look he seems like a, a centre back who can maybe push the two centre backs we have and potentially potentially have the confidence in himself to take one of their slots so I think that is what we need I think we need a centre-back who can provide competition I don't want to go into the season with Dyron Davis where they're not really going to provide competition for our starting two they're just going to provide backup options and I would rather a centre-back who is backup but could potentially push Romero and Van Ven to be even better than they are and make them keep their first team slots while rather than Van de Ven and Romero playing unless they're injured. Kind yeah, of I know. I get that. And you, you know, you always want backups that can come in and the quality doesn't decrease a lot. I mean, that was a point that Conte made quite a number of times when he was Spurs manager. You know, you need backup options, but they need to be ready to step in as and when uh, they are needed. Um, having said that, you know, Romero does get his fair share of injuries, doesn't he, each season? So, 
I think if we can, I, I don't know too much about Persho's, but if he is of the required ability and the qu required talent that can come in and um, not decrease the quality, I'm all for it, to be honest. Who are the other clubs you said were interested? Liverpool and West Ham. So I, I think he starts for West Ham. Um, although they're about to sign Maguire apparently and Aguerd is quite a good centre back and Liverpool can we offer more more, more minutes to Liverpool Prob I would say not just because they're in Europe this season so from that point of view and also like right now they, they have Van Dijk and Konate not much else after that so who else uh, they have they've got Joel Matip Matip and Gomez Gomez um, but they're in Europe and so if he fancies himself um, to be better than one of those two he'll probably get guaranteed minutes in those games where it spurs he's going to have to fight for those minutes but then you could argue he's got less to get past in Van de Ven and Romero rather than Canate and Van Dijk maybe he'll yeah. back himself to win that spot so it's not I don't think it's a foregone conclusion where he's guaranteed minutes but if I was if I was sure as I'm looking at the situation I'll probably say he's Guaranteed more minutes to Liverpool right now. Yeah, I mean, before this Ali Gold update, all I've been hearing about Persia's is him being linked to Spurs. I haven't heard anything sort of anything close to being advanced or anything for Liverpool or West Ham. Well, and I heard he agreed personal terms with um, Palace, and then it fell. And then um, Spurs tried to hijack the deal, and that's why it kind of hit the buffers. But I'm not 100 sure. Look, we'll have to see how this one because I'm I'm pretty sure like we'll hear more and more information about this in the coming days as deals for Damson Sanchez and Japet Tanganga advance. Now Joe Roden's out the door, just two more we need to get out, and then we can hopefully we can bring one in even before they depart. But I don't know, you know the way Spurs like to deal with mm -hmm. things. Uh, but let's move on. Let's talk about Eberechi Eze now. As Ali Gold says that Tottenham continue to monitor the situation of Eze, particularly with Brian Hill out of action after his groin surgery, and this is a player who I would absolutely love to have at Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, I think there's no chance this happens. Um, I think it's too good to be true. I think in terms of the money that's going to be involved in this deal, um, I don't see it. First of all, this definitely isn't going to happen unless something like Harry Kane leaves. That, I think that's pretty much a guarantee because you're talking about a fee of at least, in my mind, at least 50 million, and that would be on the cheaper side. Uh, I mean, if like Brennan Eze. Johnson's going for 50, you go, you've got to expect this guy's going to be going for more, like even 60, 70. Yeah, I'm saying, that, I'm, I'm saying at least 50, I, 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 and I do expect more, um, to be honest. So that's the kind of price that we're talking about. And then you look about where he's going to fit in at Tottenham. Um, could he play one of the number eights? We just signed Madison. Lo Celso looks like he's staying. Um, so could he partner Madison in midfield? I mean, that would be a very attacking midfield and it would mean one of Madison or Eze would have to drop back. So I don't really see that happening. Can he play in one of the wing positions? Yes, but I think he's not a natural winger anymore. I mean, he, he did start off as a winger and he can play that role, don't get me wrong, but I think his best performances in recent times for Palace have been in the central positions, in the number 10 positions. Not to say he can't play on the wing, but I don't think you sign Eze to play on the wing. I think you sign him to play in his best position, which is in midfield. So... Um, I don't think he can play on the right, in my opinion. I think he's much more... If he is going to play on the, on the wing, he can play on the left. I think he can probably do a good job there, but... If you're signing a winger, I don't think you sign Eze. I think if you're signing a number 10, you sign Eze. So I think just as much as maybe, look, you, and also you don't sign Eze to be a squad option. You sign him to be one of your main players. And I just don't see that at Tottenham right now. So I just can't see this happening. Yeah, look, it is hard to envisage a deal like this happening, especially because of how much he's going to command. But, you know, things do change pretty quickly. I know it looks for all to see that Lo Celso is going to be staying at Spurs this season. But if someone really ramps up their interest like Barcelona and, and gives us a big offer like of 20 30 million or something like that and we decide to sell him then uh, we could do a lot worse than ever Eze coming in and I think the only way we bring him in is probably if a Lo Celso goes to be honest and Kane I think Kane yeah of course Kane because we need the money in to sign him because mm -hmm. we ain't doing that outlay if uh, if Kane doesn't go look at the centre-back situation um, but let's talk about Brennan Johnson now the mail saying that Tottenham are considered favourites to sign Brennan Johnson although Brentford remain in the mix for the player's signature Brentford have already seen bids of 30 million and 40 million rejected as they pursue the Welsh forward who has bagged 29 goals in 105 games for Nottingham Forest um, I think like when you're talking about a right wing option that can fight with Kulisewski this one makes a lot more sense than maybe Eberechi Eze although I do think Eze can play that role if needs be but he's much more natural to it 
Yeah, he's a much more natural right winger or a striker as well. I actually, if I'm Brendan Johnson, to be honest, if I'm advising him, I think Brentford's a better move for him right now in terms of his career development. I think it's gonna he's gonna find game time hard to come by at Tottenham right now. And I actually don't think, in terms of how we play, it's gonna be as suited to him as how Brentford play, where Brentford are a play with a lot more trying to attack the space in the opposition half, not really a possession based system. They like to they like to play. They like to not necessarily play counter-attacks, but they like to play in the transitions and exploit the space. And also they like to play with two up top, which I think if, especially when Tony comes back in January, I think a tony Brennan johnson kind of link-up in the in the forward line would be really, really valuable to Brennan johnson I think he would thrive in that kind of system. And as well on their wing, um, attacking the space would be good. I think in our kind of system, playing on the right-hand side, I don't know, I think, I think he could do it. I just don't think it's... That is his kind of biggest strength, taking people on, creating space, creating chances. I think he's more of a goal-scoring winger than he is a chance-creation winger. And I think in our wide areas, from what I can see so far from how Ange has played, we need players who'd like to create chances on the wing rather than score goals. Yeah, I think it's absolutely spot on. But I do think that there is a spot for him if um, if we do make this... Um transfer to be honest I mean they're talking about 50 million I think it's a bit excessive for someone for like Brennan Johnson but like we've mentioned before if we can do a kind of swap deal I mean Joe Roden's off the table now but who are they talking about they're talking about Jed Spence, Spence and, Hill. and Hill I mean if we can do a deal for both of those uh, and bring in Brennan Johnson I do think he can add quite a bit especially in the squad options get minutes in the cup games and stuff like that um I think he can suit for the way Ange wants to play, to be honest. I know maybe he's shown different attributes at Nottingham Forest, but um, I actually think he can get good deliveries in the box and can take on his man. Um, but I think just Nottingham Forest have played in maybe a different way to what Spurs are looking to do this season. So maybe we haven't seen it maybe firsthand. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And maybe in a different system, he can show different qualities. Yeah. Let's move on and let's talk about Harry Kane now, last but not least. And Matt Law says that Bayern Munich are going to make a last ditch attempt to prevent their pursuit of Harry Kane collapsing. Kane is thought to be preparing himself to stay at Spurs this season, leaving any remaining negotiations to take place between the clubs. Ben Jacob says that Bayern are running out of time to sign Harry Kane, who wants his future clarified before the season starts. Tuchel's been obsessed with getting Kane and a new bid within 24 hours is likely. Bayern are going to have to up their offer of close to 120 million euros with, with a significant portion guaranteed. Spur, Sky Sports saying that Bayern are trying to salvage the Harry Kane situation. Spurs are keen to keep the negotiations open. Sky Havert on Sky Sports says that Bayern Munich are likely to come in with a new bid for Harry Kane with a figure in the region of £95 million. Has been reported by Sky Germany with the Spurs valuing the 30-year-old at over £100 million. And 90 Min say the Bayern Munich hierarchy are understood to be divided on their next move, while some are encouraging an improved bid for Harry Kane. Others believe they are fighting a losing battle and are keen to start looking elsewhere mm. so where's your head at with this today i mean those updates don't scream to me that this deal is getting done as much as they're saying they're likely to put in a bid and all this kind of stuff i haven't heard anything like i oh, would are determined to get it done buy and think they've the next bid is going to get accepted or anything like that uh, there still seems a big valuation. The bids you're talking about, 95 million, including add-ons, that's not going to get accepted. That's going to get rejected. So that's already probably, already I'm looking at another bid rejected with time running out. If they're not going to, look, they've got literally two days, probably two or three days to get this deal done. Otherwise, he's going to be staying at Spurs this season, in my mind. So I think right now, those updates don't point in, in, in the direction of Kane making the move from, what, from where I stand. Yeah, I mean, these are the updates today, you know, and throughout the day, things can change. And tomorrow, you know, things can change very quickly with these kind of situations. And do you think, do you genuinely think that Harry Kane will be here then? First game of the season against Brentford? I think so. You don't think they're going to come up, come back with any sort of bids where Levy you can seriously consider? Because he was considering the last offer. I know it got rejected in the end. So if they do up it, surely that's a stronger case for... Um, for it to be accepted. Well, they said it was a 25 million valuation gap. So, But I don't get that because it was a 25 million valuation gap in the last bid and the bid before that, David Ornstein said it was a 25 million valuation gap as well. So like every bid seems to be a 25 million valuation gap. Okay, Levy just upping it every <laughs> single time. Uh, look, I'm just very sceptical skeptical about buying, offering a bid that is enough to convince Levy to sell. I think at this point, 
We've rejected every single offer that's come through. We don't look like we're close to selling them at the moment. Um, buying a put from the from the noises that they're making from the buying camp, you know, talking about salvaging the deal, trying to save the deal, maybe looking to make a bid. Um, you know, the border split. It doesn't seem like they're confident as confident, especially they were last week that this deal was going to get done. And no, obviously I agree. Things can change very quickly in football, and buying can you know, um, very quickly come up with the cash and all of a sudden we're in a position where we would we would accept the deal with with that kind of bid, may, of, well, maybe 100 million or over 100 million plus add-ons, really. Um, that's what I think Levy uh, wants, and he wants a lot of it up front. He doesn't want all the, a lot of big portion of add-ons. But I think we're, they're cutting it very, very fine, and I think at this point, I think it's very unlikely they're going to come up with that bid. I think if they were serious about getting him through the door, I think they would have made that bid already, and they haven't. I think they're trying to get it at their price, and that's not going to work with Levy. I mean, the buy-in hierarchy and Thomas Tuchel must be absolutely pulling their hair out at the moment. I mean, every single target that Tuchel has said that he wants as the priority target has fallen through. <laughs> David Ray has gone to Arsenal. They wanted him to replace Neuer. Um, Carl Walker's about to sign a new contract with Man City. They wanted him as a new player. Now Harry, the Harry Kane situation situation as well so I mean when you're looking at these two deals with Raya and Carl Walker uh, falling through do you not think they just think like all right screw it let's just offer what Levy wants maybe they might I mean I um mate look you know, from that point of view potentially they don't want to be missing on a third target and they don't want to be upsetting Tuchel any more than they already have potentially mm -hmm. so that could force their hand a bit but they, as I say, it's Wednesday today. Season starts on Sunday. They need to do this in the next few days. And so time is running out. Time is of the essence. So they haven't looked like doing it so far. Yeah. So uh, unless they put their money where their mouth is, this deal ain't going to get done. It's peculiar, though, like how intense they are on signing him. And everyone's like since yesterday saying this bid is going to come in in the next 24 hours. This bid is coming in. I don't understand, like, why don't they just put in the bid? Like, what, what's the hold up? Maybe you know, maybe it's a lot load of PR to try and make it look like they're trying their hardest when maybe they're internally not as confident and maybe they're starting to give up on the deal. Um, it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say. There's a lot of moving parts. There's got to be a public face on what's really happening behind closed doors, and it's hard to really know what the truth is. But at this point, it look. I mean, at the moment, the fact of the matter is, it's Wednesday. He hasn't moved, and we've rejected the last offer. So at this point, you got to say it's unlikely that Kane moves. Do you think that that next bid will come in? I think it will come in, and if it's that bid, I think it gets rejected. Mm. But if it does get rejected, do you think another bid comes in after that? Unless, I mean, if, considering how long it's taken them to make this bid, are they going to make another bid within, like, 24 hours of the bid rejected? I don't know. I think this might be their last bid, but... I mean, they said the last one was their last bid, I mean, and exactly. it wasn't. So maybe they're just going to keep trying. Yeah, it's going to be interesting again to see how it pans out. I mean, a, a week ago or just a few days ago, we were kind of convinced that Harry Kane was going to be joining Bayern. Now it looks as like at this current moment in time, he is going to be staying at Spurs. But as things have changed so quickly uh, over the past week, things can easily flick back uh, the other way. So Hour by hour. Yeah, exactly. So keep yourself strapped in because I don't think this is the last we've heard of the Harry Kane situation. And obviously we'll keep you up to date every twist and turn that does happen in this Harry Kane saga. But that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding all the news stories we've brought to you. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs. <laughs>